To create internal orders in SAP, using the Fiori Launchpad, we navigate to the application called Manage Internal Orders. Click on this one. Here you can select a couple of filters if necessary, or we can just hit go to see all the internal orders that are already available in the system. In my case, this is a brand new system, so there are no internal orders yet. Let's now create a new internal order via create and you can see a new screen opened. An internal order is always created with regard to a controlling area. So you need to set a controlling area over here. Then we got the order type. Let me just expand the search help over here and select one order type. Let's say we want to create an internal order for marketing. So we select marketing over here and that's basically it. Order type will define not only what the internal order is used for. So for instance, this one is used for marketing expenses, but also it will define a lot of other parameters. But this I will show you in a separate session. As you can see, we could also create as always from reference, meaning that if we have already a couple of internal orders created in the system, then we can use an existing one as a reference to create a new one. Let's now click on continue and we are forwarded to the following page displaying a lot of parameters that we can enter for our internal order. I will now explain you the most important ones. In the general data, we can fill a couple of free text fields, such as the department of the internal order or some more information like telephone and so on, but also quite importantly, the currency of the internal order. This is even mandatory. The currency from the internal order stems from the company code currency. However, this is only a default value so we can change the internal order currency if needed. In the assignment tab, you can see first of all that an internal order must be assigned to one company code. We can assign the internal order to a business area, if we work with business areas, to a plant and also to a functional area. The object class is also mandatory. Right now it's set to overhead costs. We could also change it to investment, production or profit analysis. The object class itself is used to determine what kind of internal order we have. We can assign the internal order to a profit center if we have the profit center accounting in place and we can assign responsible persons also by whom the creation of the internal order was requested. We can link a WBS element for the project system but if we insert a WBS element we should be aware that the internal order won't be subject to budgeting because the budgeting will always stem from the WBS element itself. Also, we can assign the internal order to a sales order so that the internal order will accumulate all the costs associated with that specific sales order. Further down, you can see a section called status. And here we can see both the system status, so the status created by the system itself, as well as the user defined status. When first creating the internal order, the system status is set to create it. However, in this state, we cannot post anything to the internal order. This is only done once the internal order is saved and thereby free for postings. The status could also be technically closed, so there can't be any more postings made on this internal order regarding planning or even closed completely. Then we cannot make any more postings to this internal order and this counts for both actual and planned values. You can also see here two indicators lock so we can actually lock the internal order if necessary and we can also prepare it for archiving by setting a deletion flag. The user status on the other hand is set in customizing if necessary. Then we have here control tab so for instance we could set this internal order as a statistical internal order. So this flag is used for example to evaluate costs statistically that actually run on a cost center. So this means that not the actual values are posted to the internal order but the internal order is just used for informational purposes. And here we have the corresponding field actual posted cost centers. We only use this field if we selected the button statistical order. When we specify a cost center here, we can post the statistical postings on the order additionally also to a cost center. So during the periodic allocations, the system posts true costs to the cost center specified here. If we do not store a cost center, then the given internal order is not processed during the periodic allocation of costs. 
Then we have here three more indicators, integrated planning. This is used to specify whether an internal order participates in the integrated planning or not. So this has to do something with the submodule for project system. Then we have revenue postings. So here we specify whether we allow revenues to be posted to an internal order. And also we have the commitment update. So controlling whether the commitments should be updated for this internal order. Let's open the next tab, period and closing. We have the results analysis key. This would define the valuation of our internal order during the period and closing. Then we have the costing sheet that controls the calculation of overhead costs, the overhead key, which is used to determine the order specific or even the material related overhead rates and an interest profile containing the rules governing the interest calculation for projects. On the receiver side, we have the settlement cost element. So this is the cost element under which the costs on the internal order are allocated during the actual settlement. We have the cost center. So this field will contain the cost center, which is to receive all the costs from the internal order. And we have the general ledger account. So this field would contain the general ledger account to which the internal order is settled in full. Then we have one more tab called investments. This is a more specialized topic, but to summarize, the investment section is just relevant if you use the investment management module of SAP in your system. Then we have one more tab called translation and long text, where we can store additional information in different languages for our internal order. And last but not least, the change documents, where we can see all the changes applied to this internal order. And that's basically it. So over here we can now save the internal order. Yeah, and this marks the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel to not miss any more content. And see you next time.